the spirit said, brooding. His word was in my bone. Forget brooding. about acquisition. Acquisition Over is tertiary. The primary the goal brooding. of lifting. Use it quickly. Oh, fire! Be Let your mind be Holy God's fire! For there are two ministries that have been seriously threatened in the body of Christ. And there needs to be caution and balance there. There are two ministries that have been threatened. Number one is the prophetic ministry. Number two is the ministry that has to do with transformation and empowerment, even financial empowerment. We must be careful. In attempting to purify the body of Christ, there are two ministries we are fighting and we are going to regret it. Because these two ministries are the ministry that played the greatest role in bringing the gospel. The ministry of the prophetic was why the gospel worked. And the ministry of kingdom financing. Are we together now? I'm just digressing to place. There are many believers today who because of the imbalances around the prophetic, unfortunately, which we have identified and we know that God is working on across Nigeria, across Africa. There have been many issues here and there. There are two major issues with the prophetic that is now being corrected. Number one is the absence of genuine consecration. So over the years, there's been a lot of carelessness and lasciviousness around the prophetic simply because of the abundance and the charismatism around the gift. I'm just teaching you this for your knowledge. Number two has been the purity and the word compliancy of the practices. Many of the practices around the prophetic circles are largely extra biblical. And there's no time. One day I hope I'll have the time to teach you on the prophetic and the apostolic ministry. The very nature of the prophetic ministry is controversial. All the controversial manifestations of Jesus in the Bible was when he switched prophetic. Are we together? So there is already a natural propensity of being in a place of, of where you can provide error and confusion. That is the reason why a true prophet must balance it by being sound in scripture. This has been the greatest mistake of the prophetic over the years. Absence of consecration, carelessness around the altar, and then number two, principles and practices that in many regards are very disdaining and completely antichrist. But that does not mean the prophetic as a ministry should be thrown away just because we are trying to purify it. In my opinion, and respectfully speaking, even though I'm teaching on the Great Commission, the greater problem that needs to manage, to be managed, is what is brewing right now. The arrogance of the apostolic ministry. This will cause more danger than the disaster of the prophetic ministry. Because naturally, and by apostle, I don't mean whether your name is Apostle Joshua Selma. No, 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 that's not the idea. The apostolic ministry, generally, all through scripture, Paul, Peter, modern history, the apostolic ministry generally comes with a sense of pride and a sense of superiority above other ministries. It is a natural weakness that comes with the apostolic ministry. When you see a true apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ who is humble, it didn't come by default. It is a product of the dealing of the Holy Spirit. Now the apostolic ministry needs to be careful as we manage and deal with the matters that have to do with the prophetic ministry. Because it was through the prophetic ministry that apostles were even born in the first place. You see that? And we have to be careful. There are people right now whose lives cannot be changed because of the prophetic ministry because it looks like they've been squeezed. We are trying to do what Jezebel did to the prophets. We need to be careful. Hallelujah. There were prophets who were under the custody of Elijah who were in hiding because of a threat that came to them. Now there are many young men who have a genuine prophetic calls but because of the, the overall image of the prophetic, the prophetic is a great blessing. It remains an eternal blessing. What we need to do is to pray, and I'm saying this on air, I'm saying this respectfully. Let's pray for all our colleagues and brothers and sisters across the world. Those who have been given to compromise and the bankruptcy of consecration, 
provided Jesus has not come, there is still room for renewal and transformation and repentance. And then to re-examine prophetic practices in light of scriptural strategies. These are the things that need to be corrected. But while that is happening, the apostolic ministry needs to quickly go back to the threshing floor and start repenting from pride. Because when we are done dealing with the prophetic ministry, we'll find out that the pride and the imbalances, false teaching is worse than false prophecy. You see, I can prophesy to you falsely and you can know the truth in one moment. But when I build you around an error, I have carved you on stone. It will take God. Are we together now? It's not easy to transfer false prophecy, but you can transfer imbalance. You can transfer false teaching. So there is a bigger problem across the Nigerian and African soil. And that is there has to be a restoration of doctrine. Step one is to admit that the best of us does not know everything. And then to know that God has only committed dimensions to us. We are mandated by God to be effective within the dimension given to us while appreciating the other supplies in the body, which includes the prophetic ministry. And then to be on our knees praying for the overall health of the church. An attack on the prophetic is an attack on the church. An attack on the apostolic is an attack on the church. Rejoicing over the downfall of others is going to be a catastrophe to our life. Because when there are no prophets, it will hinder the manifestation of the program of God in many ways. Are we together now? Yes. So this, I just thought to bring this in because I, 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 there, there is a, many people who are called to empower the church, even financially. We have pushed them out of the scene and with all their ideas and their wisdom, billionaires and millionaires, and now the church is looking for money. And our bank, because we have ignored those ministries, is now beginning to push us in compromise. Some of them came with, some of them are veterans in business, veterans in economy, and they brought their hearts sincerely to serve the body. Like any other ministry, they will have their error. Everybody, listen, everybody is a fanatic to his area of call. So when you find people emphasizing an area above another, it is simply the fire that comes with the bias of their call. If I've been called to lead you in prayer, I will teach you prayer as if there is nothing else to do. If I've been called to empower you financially, I will teach you finances as if there's nothing else to do. It is simply the fanatism that comes with the call. But that does not mean that we should throw away many people. There are many believers now, many churches now, many circles now. Their number one prayer point is finance many projects to do but those that god has empowered to come and serve the body we are pushing them away in a bit to try to clean the church it is a mistake there is a referee a man who is playing football cannot assess other footballers there are people outside the field who assess everyone the bible says let him that thinks he stands take heed lest he falls are we learning now I'm saying this because there is a generation that is learning anything they find. And that generation is going to be a disaster if balance is not brought to their life. What threw Lucifer from heaven was not lost. It was pride that translated to treason. God himself opposes pride. We have to be able to manage people and when we observe wrongs within the body of Christ, we must communicate the truth in love i repeat the truth in love once the truth is outside of love there is a serious problem now i have sensed in my spirit that there is trouble within the spiritual climate of nigeria africa and across the globe we have insulted the west and made it look like they are all cold they are not serious we have no idea some of the moves of God that are still being preserved. I have met people across the world, Europe, the US. I am telling you their spiritual fire and vibrancy and consecration. Some of us do not come close into it. God is everywhere still with witnesses he's raising. We need to be careful, Nigeria. Our arrogance may peg us and abort something prophetic that God is giving us the grace. Just because in this season, God has put the lamp on Nigeria, we must not make the mistakes that has happened in the history of the Nigerian church. 
we must approach this mission God has given us with profound humility. Otherwise, our bishopric will be taken and given to a least nation that may not seem to represent the purposes of God. And God will raise mighty men and women. I'm saying this because the pride that is around believers, especially the Nigerian and the African church, we need to be careful. Beginning from myself, all of us, there's no tell them when you are discussing this. Is a message from God to everybody. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, your name is to be hallowed. As anointed as we are, when we are sick and we pray, and nothing happens, we run to the hospital. If we destroy the ministry of the hospital simply because the healing anointing is there, the day your anointing cannot raise the sick, there will be many people, many people today have died who are not supposed to have died because the kind of teaching that came down played the hospitals in an attempt to describe the superiority of God's power. I walk in signs and wonders is a grace that God has given. But we have a medical team, a responsible and professional medical team. Are we together? I have prayed for people. I have given them money to go to the hospital. I have gone to hospitals to visit people myself and to pray for them there. And I don't do it with any sense of shame or whatever it is. If we don't repent from some of these falsehood, life would be disgracing us one by one because of the imbalances that come from us. The, the earlier we admit this, the better for us because the days that are coming will expose our limitations in ways that will bring shame to us. A man of God is called to teach truth as revealed to him by God whilst respecting other supplies that are within the body. I emphasize again, the prophetic deserves an eternal honor. It should be corrected, it should be balanced, and we are praying, we continue to pray that out of the ashes of lack of concentration, consecration and all kinds of wrong extra-biblical practices, that God himself will walk upon the heart of those called into the prophetic ministry to become a portrait of authentic prophetic ministry. But we who God has called into the apostolic especially, we must manage our, our overconfidence with pride. You see, let me tell you, my, the bit of my work with the fathers of faith in this nation has taught me something. There are many things the fathers see and you see them keep quiet. They only talk when they are in the place of prayer. Let us learn. There is something they know that we do not know. I repeat to you, the Bible says, He that thinketh he stands, let him take heed lest he falls. If Jesus as the Son of God almost fell in Gethsemane, then we need to be careful. Our overconfidence will only give Satan room to disgrace us. There is an approach to ministry with humility of heart as by people who have been helped by God. And that must be the template we approach people. The Bible says, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Are we together? Yes. I've met a few people in my life and sometimes when I see those people, they want to run away from me because it looks like, oh, there's a, st there's a stigma. Maybe they think I will insult them and this. And sometimes I draw them and say, how are you? This and that, may God bless you. If you ever give room to listen, okay, you may need to adjust this. Just adjust this one, adjust this. We are praying for you and that's it. But we need to be careful, especially the generation that is looking up to our lives. Those ones that have not even started, you see what the devil is already doing with them. The church is called to pray. We pray for one another so that in an attempt to fix a pipe, we don't close a dam. How did I get here? The quality of your life. That's what, that's what brought me. I think God wanted me to say this. Hallelujah. So believers, learn it. Doesn't matter what church you belong to. Respect the prophetic. Respect the apostolic. Respect the pastoral. Respect the evangelistic. Are we together? Respect the ministry of the teacher. Respect elders. Now, forever, for as long as Jesus remains, we will keep seeing all kinds of errors and mistakes that require correction. 
and as much as God grants grace, we will do so in love while watching our own lives. Let me tell you the truth. The correction that has come to the apostolic prophetic ministry, maybe in the last three to five years, I truly believe is the will of God. But we must know when it has come to an end. Let me show you a scripture God showed me. Can I show you? Psalm 76 and verse 10. Give it to us. Let's read it. And then I'll finish my teaching. One, two, read. Surely the wrath of man shall praise thee. The remainder of the wrath shall thou restrain. Keep that scripture there. There is a way the anger of man can bring praise to God. That is what has happened. It is the anger that God has planted in the hearts of many people across the body of Christ that has helped to wake people suddenly. You see that? It has awoken people to doctrine. It has awoken people to consecration. It has awoken people to purity. Awoken people to prayer. Awoken people to all kinds of things. There is an anger that God himself allowed in the hearts of man that has brought praise to the Lord. But the remaining of that anger, God is now restraining it. He's saying it is enough. The mission of that anger has been fulfilled. If you continue, you are walking in the flesh. The wrath of man shall praise thee, but the remainder of that wrath shall thou restrain. The purpose of the wrath is to bring an awakening to those who are sleeping. But when that awakening has happened, then there must be grace. It says in your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down. There is timing to it while you are still angry. Is somebody learning? Are you learning? This is very important. So don't go around pointing hands at people and be a judge and say this one, mm -mm, that's not your business. We must be at our knees praying. Anybody who God exposes an opportunity for transformation, for repentance and change, and he plays with God in, God's intelligence, there is a system already within the economy of God where judgment is meted upon stubborn hearts. Leave that to God. It is his business. Are we together now? Yes. In the Bible, there have been all repentant people where in the presence of correction by the Spirit through men, they did not listen. God has a system of bringing them to his righteous judgment. But as far as we are concerned, the ministry of truth in love backed up with a genuine heart of prayer and passion for the body of Christ remains the end time secret for survival. As a man of God, you will never hear me open my mouth to criticize a church, to criticize another man of God, and far be it from me to criticize the fathers of faith. There are fathers, no matter what they do, your own is to pray. Their age and their track record has shut your mouth forever. The only person who can really talk to them is God. Are we together? Yes. Mo these are protocols in the body of Christ that most people do not understand. For this cause many are weak, for this cause many are sick, for this cause many do sleep. Forget about acquisition. Acquisition is tertiary. The primary goal of lifting, use it quickly. Oh, fire! Let your mind be holy. God's fire.